Uh, good afternoon, it's Roger Gilbert here reporting for International Aquafeed magazine. I'm in Alexandria, Egypt, attending the WAS, that's the World Aquacultural Society's Chapter. chapter's first meeting in Africa. And I'm on the stand of DSM, uh, and DSM has uh, recently acquired a Bioman. So I'm with two gentlemen, one from DSM who is Bo Benson and also uh, ben Benedict Stanton who comes from uh, the former Bioman company but is now with DSM. Uh, and they had, DSM had its uh, presentation or an event here uh, in the lecture hall uh, yesterday about uh, gut health, uh, mycotoxins and uh, M science, phytase, and M science. So we're going to ask a couple of questions on how it went. Uh, Bo, how did uh, the presentations go yesterday? Thank you. Um, it went well. I uh, I came across with my message. The, the key message was to tell the Egyptian uh, tilapia producers and the uh, commercial market to use phytase to uh, improve the digestibility of the feed to use less monocalcium phosphate, less rock phosphate. Um, I had good response, I had good questions uh, during the session and uh, the follow-up at the booth, which is very convenient, was really about is it feasible? Is it, is it what I explained in theory? Will it happen in reality? My experience comes from monogastric, from broilers and uh, the swine industry as well, where we used it for 20 years and that was my convincing message that you have to trust it works we just have to see it in the field yeah. and how do you how do you think uh, the audience responded in the conference itself you said there were some interesting questions there were interesting questions and I perceive the Egyptian academia and feed producers as very friendly I think they were skeptical yeah. with uh, with all uh, respect because it is a new technology where you add an enzyme uh, to get more out of the same and you have to trust that the performance data goes up um, so the questions was the uh, the applied science uh, how would it work in reality where should we start and are we sure it works and the skeptical thing I have recognized a question from 20 years ago in the monogastric yes. where we started so it was expected and uh, again a very friendly environment and people gave me the impression that they would like to follow up on it so they came here to ask more questions in depth yeah. we talk about matrix values matrix values are basically digestibility values what does it mean it's a word that you can use in other uh, setups but but this is really important to have better feed conversion and less feed costs mm. and the feed costs when you mention 350 pound, Egyptian pounds per ton in cost savings they really listen yes. but they're also skeptical yeah. because they don't want to compromise the, uh, the performance of the animal. Yeah. That's really interesting and yesterday you were the chairman of the session and yeah. you had your colleague Ben uh, present first and I understand that he spoke about gut health and this is all around uh, animal performance and uh, feed quality, I, I imagine. But Ben, uh, let me bring you into the conversation. Uh, yeah, how did uh, how did it go for you talking about gut health? Uh, I agree with Bo. Actually, I think it's a really hot topic. Everybody is talking about gut health, but actually, not many people really uh, know what it means. It's kind of a buzzword. So, it was really good to have the opportunity to explain how we approach gut health at DSM, and also present DSM as one company. Like you said, Biomin and DSM are now operating as one, and we have a whole wealth of knowledge, and we have a really incredibly diverse portfolio now as well. So how can we use our products and how can we combine our products to really make a difference to the customer? Yeah. So we were talking about the organic acids and how we can use these to fight gram-negative pathogens, how we can use phytogenics, for example, to fight gram-positive pathogens. And on top of that, okay, we can cover the pathogen, but we also have to take care of the host. So this is where we can bring in a legacy DSM solution, the nucleotides in Rovimax, and really build up the strength and the robustness of that animal. So help the animal to help itself. Mm. 
That's fascinating and it, it's logical and the one thing missing out of that which was the third topic that I heard was about aflatoxins and the threat that the raw materials. Uh, what was the outcome of the uh, presentation on aflatoxins in terms of where are we at with aquaculture and the recognition that aflatoxin, mycotoxins are a challenge uh, in nutrition? The, the fact is that the, um, the tilapia diet does not only consist uh, animal byproducts, it consists more and more plant-based uh, products. And we know from the way we store its material and the way we import, remember Egypt report, import a lot of cereals. The wheat cannot be used for feed, that's used for human consumption. But the storage uh, toxins, we have limited resources globally and from import. And if we work with the storage toxins, and cleave them, which we can with the, that's the, really the, the novelty of biomin, that we can cleave the toxins and use the raw material afterwards. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's um, a novelty, it's a new technology that has to be implemented because we cannot afford wasting any, ingre any raw materials. Yeah. I think that came across clearly. Yeah. Uh, ben? Yeah, I, I would maybe add to this as well. I don't actually see the topic of gut health, animal health and mycotoxins as mutually exclusive. For example, we know if we have mycotoxins in the diet, this is going to impact the animal health. So we have to consider these as part of our preventative health program. And mycotoxins are becoming more and more important. So for example, we know as grain prices are going up, potentially people are going to be using lower quality grains. We know that animal feed generally has more and more plant proteins in. We also know with climate change, for example, places are getting wetter and warmer. So this all increases the risk of aquafeeds, uh, of mycotoxins in aquafeeds. Sorry. So as the risk goes up, our mitigation, our kind of a protective measures, our insurance, let's say, has to go up. And this is where Biomin or DSM can really, really help the customer in providing kind of a whole value chain approach, right from kind of analyzing the feed, um, evaluating, validating that feed right through to providing the solution as well. And Bo, finally, uh, what was, what's your take-home message from the show, uh, from the conference and the exhibition? Yeah, it's our first uh, time here. It's the first show in Africa, in Egypt. We made the decision uh, in December or January uh, when we had the new organization settled with the integration of Biomin and DSM. And we were far too late because the, all the booths were sold out. Yeah. This show was supposed to happen one year ago, uh, meaning that all the booths were sold out. Uh, it was a strategic decision to come here and to get the best out of what we could get. The, the booth is in the corner next to the coffee area, which is fine. Yeah. I'm very impressed by the um, networking. The Egyptian uh, academia networks a lot. And I see the feed companies are communicating amongst each other as well. So I see, uh, my take home is really that I see a, a market, a, a world that, that communicates to each other and use the knowledge they have. Yeah. Another take home is it is that they do not all apply what they learn. So the differentiation in the market, some has high performance, some farmers use, still spend one and a half year to grow a tilapia and some with the right feet, with the right technologies, can do it in six months. So the knowledge is there, the people are there, the way of using the, the new technology is implemented differently. The last thing which I think is very positive for Egypt is that uh, I see international companies here being here. I see a presence of uh, knowledgeable people, also from outside, so that to grow the tilapia and the aqua business in Egypt has an interest from companies outside. It's not a one man's job for Egypt alone. Yeah. And this is, I'm quite confident that it will, it will happen. Yeah. We just need to do the, the hard work now and make sure that it, it being executed what we learned from this yeah. conference. And Ben, a take home message from you? Uh, so for me, it's been a really amazing experience, actually. I've done a lot of traveling in Latin America and in Asia, talking about tilapia. So to come to Egypt, the home of tilapia, it's really nice to kind of like listen to people, hear people, and start to learn how the aquaculture industry is in, uh, in Egypt. Um, for me, there's a few take-home messages. 
um, or let's say a real learning experience. I'm really humbled actually to how much knowledge there is here in Egypt. Speaking to so many different professors and doctors, um, different research institutes, there's a real like kind of buzz around the research and I think that's a good thing, you know, we need kind of scientifically backed solutions if we want to move forward as an industry. So that's one thing, talking to the researchers. Um, the second thing, after two years of very little travel, it's really, really great to reconnect with some of our customers again yeah. and just have some face-to-face -face meetings, not necessarily about business, but asking about family, asking about friends, lifestyle, seeing how they are and asking these questions. It's been really, really invaluable. And of course, growing that customer base as well. Yeah. Um, the third thing for me is not just meeting customers. Equally important is meeting the colleagues. So myself and Bo, we must have been talking for about one year now, yeah. but we've never met face-to-face. -face. Yeah. And also the team here in Egypt as well, which are doing incredible work. And as Bo said, this, this organization was quite last minute because yeah. of the, the, the change in date. But the team here in Egypt did a really incredible job pulling everything together. Um, the Marcoms team working on the booth, the local team working and inviting the customers. And it's really great to have the opportunity to come and connect as one team, especially now we, we're working as one. So a few learnings, a few great experiences and very excited for the future. Yeah, yeah very exciting about the future. And uh, this is the first. I understand that we're going to have a meeting similar to this uh, next year and uh, every year, hopefully. But uh, thank you both very much. Uh, all the best with the rest of the show and uh, look forward to seeing you at the next African WAS chapter meeting. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for that.